All right, everybody, welcome back. This is the Good Old Hockey Podcast. This is episode number 13 of our show here. Uh, we have a special guest today. His name is Tony Chesro. Um, Tony, you are, well, how I found him was one night me and my friend were playing the NHL video game series and we were looking at like the stats for the EASHL, which is, for those of you that don't know, it's like be a pro almost for online hockey um, in the video game. And we found Tony was, I think he had the most games played at least, or one of the top like points he had in the game. So me and my buddy were like, dude, we got to talk to this guy. Like we got to hear more about it. And then got onto a party with him. And then we're like, we learned more of your story. And I was like, dude, we got to have you on our podcast. Um, so that's what we're doing here today. But Tony, if you want to give our listeners just kind of like a little backstory uh, about what you've done, what you've accomplished, everything like that. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so I, I, first off, I would like to say thank you so much for having me on your show. I really appreciate appreciate it. And it truly means the world a platform to talk about hockey, let alone my stories. Just I feel so blessed. So thank you guys both yeah, so very much. 100%. Yeah. So um, when I was in the second grade, I got um, – a genetic eye disorder called Best Disease. It's a, it's very similar to macular degeneration in elderly people, if you've ever heard of that. And it affected me fast. So my vision is deteriorating, but not at like a super fast pace. Okay. So I wasn't 100% sure what sport I was going to play because I originally had played baseball. And my parents took me out of baseball. They just figured like a metal bat and a ball, like it wasn't going to work out very good for me because I was playing third base. Yeah. So that's when I kind of fell in love with video games and just the, I didn't really understand the culture of it back then. And I don't even know if there was much of a culture, <laughs> but, but uh, I, I just I loved it so much. And when I was 13, I started playing or maybe I was 12. I apologize. I started playing ice hockey and uh, the doctors told me that I probably shouldn't play at first, but my dad was really um, enthusiastic about it because he took my sister and I uh, skating and she was a figure skater. And I actually was a halfway decent skater when I first started. Um, so I started playing on like a local youth team and just stuck with it and ended up playing in high school. I ended up winning state my senior year. Um, I went to Glenbard wow. North. Yeah, it was next level. I'm not going to lie. I, uh, to get to the championship, I ended up scoring the goal with 14 seconds left to tie it, to send it to overtime. Nice. Oh, yeah. yeah. It was pretty awesome. It was a pretty lucky deflection, but I think I was in the right spot. So yeah, <laughs> it kind of got a good bounce um definitely so tony uh just just for our listeners out there i guess um just segueing where where exactly are you from and and i guess you know where did you play high school hockey at too for sure uh i'm from the suburbs of chicago illinois um i went to a high school called glenbard north and yeah it was it was a good or i almost said college it was a good high school i have a lot of good friends <laughs> Nice. nice. Yeah, that's also, awesome. Yeah, go ahead, Gally. Um, yeah, so I guess, you know, could you just talk about a little bit about your, you know, playing hockey after after high school? Um yeah. I did I did search you up on Elite Prospects, so um <laughs> I saw I saw you have some prior experience in, in both the juniors and uh ACHA too. So could you just touch on that a little bit? Yeah, absolutely. So after high school, I tried out for a team called the Dells Ducks, and I ended up tendering with them. And they traded me to a team called the Minnesota Owls. And I played there for my first year. I was kind of like healthy scratch, fourth line player. Um, and then my second season, I started off with the Minnesota Owls and midway through the season. I just kind of wasn't gelling with the team or getting much playing time, so I requested a trade. And I got moved to a team in Texas called the Sugarland Imperials. Um, I played there for about two months and then asked for another trade. I was kind of homesick and 
kind of wanted to be a little bit closer to home. So I ended up playing for a team called the Central Wisconsin Saints in the Minnesota Junior Hockey League. And then I kind of took a little bit of a break from hockey. I was just kind of like mentally exhausted and was going through a lot, to be completely honest with you. But I moved to Fairbanks, Alaska with somebody that I knew from the Minnesota Owls. And I trained out there for about six months and ended up playing my last season of junior hockey with the Sugarland Imperials again. And it was a blast. My coach played in the NHL. His name is Jared Palmer. He's one of the kindest people I've ever met on the planet. Wow. And my, my just like, oh, sorry. I would just like to say thank you to my billet family, Ken and Stella Meyer. Like they're just the most accepting people I've ever met. That's awesome. Yeah. That's really sweet. So I guess, you know, coming from um, juniors playing both in Texas and in Minnesota as well, I guess, does, is there any certain memory that, that sticks out to you that's, uh, you know, you'd like to share? Oh, I'm not, I got to think on that. Uh, <laughs> I guess like one of the, one of the funnier stories, I guess would be there's, there was one time I was in the, a car with two people from Russia and they were like ordering McDonald's and like, sw- they didn't really understand that like you can't, it's not culturally acceptable to swear while in a drive through. <laughs> and it, it kind of made my day. That's uh, funny. Yeah. And then I guess um, just the camaraderie that I had with everybody on my, the Sugarland Imperials team. Like I was just such a good team and we had, we were just so well coached and, yeah nothing nothing really specific but just yeah. a lot of just good hockey and f- good teammates yeah good teammates okay so <clears throat> you'd mentioned that you played for um <clears throat> team usa with blind hockey how did you were you playing <clears throat> well obviously with the null you were playing not blind hockey like that was just traditional um what was I know you mentioned is your vision at ten percent now, or what's yeah what's around so okay, I have so around that time eyesight, yeah was that still around like the time you were playing juniors was what was what was your vision like at that point around ten percent wow still. that's impressive okay yeah so Thank you. wow I guess I like I apologize for not knowing but could you kind of explain at least to our listeners too just what exactly like that changes for you in terms of like how it's different for you versus me. If I were to go play hockey. For sure. So I have a 90% visual obstruction in my center vision. Um, and it essentially looks like a firework going off and old time TV static at the same time. So it's mm. can always phasing in and out. Okay. Uh, it's green, purple, orange, red, and yellow. And it's, it's like, <laughs> It kind of looks like if you somebody took acid, and okay. not, not to be negative or anything like that. <laughs> um, yeah. I've never done that, by the way. So <laughs> I, I guess I, I don't know. I imagine yeah. that's what it would be like. Yeah, that's what it would be like. Okay, cool. Um, yeah, that's wow. That's impressive. That um, I mean, I could barely play as it is. I was never a great hockey player, but that's awesome, though. I mean, you were able to do that with. Um, like vision impairment how did you get into like blind hockey like how was that um because that's a different kind of a different sport um yeah you can explain just what that sport is and like how different it is for sure so how i got into it um somebody that i went to high school with messaged me and was like hey uh i know what happened with your college team my college team folded um Hmm. So they were like, have you ever heard of blind hockey? And I was like, no. And they were like, you should come and coach. So I got in touch with the team. It was called the Chicago Blind Blackhawks at the time. And they said, not only can you come and help coach, but since your visual field and everything like that meets the requirements, you can also come and play. So I was just like, no way. Like this is player yeah. like Reggie Dunlop, player coach captain, like let's do this thing. Yeah. <laughs> and uh yeah, I just instantaneously fell in love. So I guess like the major differences would be 
is the puck is made out of metal and it's full of metal ball bearings. So it makes noise. Um, mm. And so you also need to complete one pass in the offensive zone. So no breakaways. So okay. the goalies are completely blind and they track the puck um, as they, they can hear it and like it's yeah. echo location. Like and it's obviously wow. one of the most fascinating things I've ever seen. Yeah. They'll make glove saves, like pure like glove saves. That's crazy. I mean, <laughs> playing goalie is so damn hard and, and playing it. Jeez, that's just, that's, that's incredible that, um, you know, both, both goalies and players. I mean, I'm, I, I watched some videos on it and I, I was just blown away, just impressed with, um, that sport. And I mean, yeah. And that's, that's a, that's a very fascinating way that you, you got into that. Um, so I guess just rewinding a little bit, can you talk about a little bit about your, you know, college experience and, um, yeah. I guess where, where did you go to college? So I went to two different colleges my freshman year, I went to Holy Cross College in Indiana. It's kind of if you ever ever heard of the movie Rudy. Oh yeah, yeah. It's kind of that's where he went. Um, so, unfortunately, uh, three kids got kicked off of the team at the beginning of the year, so we dropped out of the league. So we were just kind of playing like exhibition games against like Purdue and some other schools. I think Butler was one of them, and. Um, so I kind of, I loved the school, but the hockey team wasn't what I was necessarily looking for. So I ended up transferring to a school called Lewis university in Illinois and it was ACHA D three. And I played there for a season. I actually led all of ACHA hockey midway through the season in penalty minutes, which is kind of an, not an <laughs> impressive stat, but like, <laughs> It's one of those, yeah, it is, but it isn't kind of, yeah, it's one of those stats where it's like, wow. So I guess leading off of that, like, what what would you describe your, you know, your player type? What what would you compare yourself to? Are you, were you more of a goon or were you a playmaker or big, Um, big hits? So like going, going from juniors back into ACHA D3, like, you you were now playing against 18 year olds again and mm, yeah. the hits would look a lot more vicious than they actually were so uh, part of the reason why i i had so many penalty minutes was my childhood best friend was the captain of the team and if anybody took a run at him i kind of like went berserker yeah. i'm not going to lie too many <laughs> okay. like, ups to c4 before the game before they came <laughs> you uh, four in the water bottles <laughs> yeah uh, it's unbelievable that what that stuff can do um, yeah yeah so I, I would describe my play style if you're familiar with andrew shaw he played for the blackhawks he was kind of like oh, yeah. an all-around player but mostly kind of like a gritty forward who mm-hmm. wasn't afraid to go to the dirty areas and then in blind hockey i would probably say i would probably be more like patrick kane Oh, Damn. Okay. Yeah. Nice. Well, That's Patty sweet. King. Are you are you a Blackhawks fan? Oh yeah, yeah, huge Blackhawks fan. Okay. What was your reaction when they got the first overall pick for Bedard? Oh, oh my gosh. So <laughs> it's kind of a funny story. So I was sitting downstairs watching the television, and my dad was upstairs watching the television, and there was a little bit of a delay, and I just heard my dad slap his hands like as hard as he could, and I'm like, oh. My God. <laughs> And like it, it was such an electric feeling, and I mean it was one of those decisions that like, it was so easy to make. Like you're not gonna not pick Connor Bedard, and like no. it, it it's been such a joy to watch him play, and it, mm-hmm. it, it's special. Like his playmaking ability is truly special. Yeah, no, it is. Is honestly, I mean, he as a player all around, his shot is insane as well as his passing, which is. I mean, I think, I guess Matthews, and honestly Patrick Kane too, I could say relating to him, not much. McDavid's more of a bigger guy all around. <clears throat> He's got speed passing and a little bit of scoring, but Bedard's shot is one in seven billion. I would yeah. Say. So, one, yeah, 100%. Yeah. I'm a Sharks fan, so nice. we were in the hunt for Bedard, but I knew it wasn't going to happen. I was like, it's only going to be those top three teams. Um, 
But yeah, you guys have a good. I get Seth Green. Then. Yeah, we could this year. We got Will Smith too last year, which I'm excited for him. He's doing pretty well at the World Juniors right now. Um, so we've got some future in the works. But yeah, Bedard's a special case. And yeah, I, mean, I made a Patrick Kane and Taves. Like, yeah, you guys have a lot of history. <laughs> I made a I made a bold take at the beginning of the season saying Bedard's going to get a hundred points. So he's not really on. <laughs> Not really on pace for it right now, but you know, lots of lots of stuff know. could happen. So yeah, there's lots of hockey left, and he's got what um, another half half the season still to go. So we could who knows what we could see in the future. But um, yeah, uh, Gally had written this question down, but I'm curious: Does the USA and Canada have a rivalry in blind hockey as well? Oh my gosh. The rivalry of blind hockey for Canada and USA is next level. I've broken my collarbone two times. Somebody separated the shoulder. Like, it, it's just a war. Um, I, Canada, you know, they, uh, they've, been, they've had blind hockey for 40 years. And we haven't even hit 10 years yet. So uh, the talent level is a little bit better on uh, Team Canada. But every, you know, tournament that they have here in the United States, like they're finding new people who have visual disabilities and love to play hockey. And like, it, we just keep getting better. Like there's a pipeline of players. There's this one 13 year old kid named Easton Keto, and he plays in Texas and he lights up junior varsity right now. And oh, yeah. he might even be on varsity. I could be wrong. Like he's that good of a player. Um, and yeah, just develop the development and Team USA and the players that they keep finding is just next level. Okay, that's cool. Yeah. Um, so I guess you, you, you know, you did say that you started out with the um, the Blackhawks blind hockey team. Is that correct? Correct. Yeah. So I guess um, just going from there, uh, did, did you have to play a certain amount of years and kind of get used to? Um, you know, playing that, that type of sport before you did transition to Team USA? And did they kind of reach out to you or were there tryouts or how, how did that kind of all go down? Yeah, for sure. So I, the head coach at the time for the Chicago Blind Blackhawks was also the head coach of Team USA. So okay. um, I kind of got an email saying, hey, you know, we're going to make a team. Would you like to play on it? At the time I was still in college. Um, and I was like, yes, absolutely. And then there was a tryout. Um, I, it went pretty well. Uh, I ended up making the inaugural team. Um, I'm currently not on the team, and I'm, I'm actually on my little comeback, trying to get back on the team and playing with the Chicago team again locally. Okay. And I had two uh, hernia surgeries on my stomach, which have prevented me from being able to play. But yeah, I'm trying to bounce back. Okay. Oh wow! That's cool. Yeah, those are some two major surgeries, man. I mean, I, I shattered my kneecap playing playing hockey when I was like 16, and that was a difficult injury to come back from. So, um, yeah, man, Godspeed on 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 getting back to that. I I believe in you, though, Tony. You got this. Hey, thank you so much. <laughs> I've definitely yeah. used NHL, ES, EASHL to cope. <laughs> oh yeah. Okay, let's get into hey. that because. We got yeah, ask. not gonna lie. A, a, a little, just to touch on that. When I shattered my kneecap, I played so much online versus for NHL 15. Like at a, at a point, I was top a thousand in the world, so I was playing against top 100 to all the way, you know, all the way up. But um, you know, my team, my team was the Flames all the way back in 2015, 16. They weren't too bad. Now they're atrocious. But <laughs> so, how did um, let's see here. So I have some stats up here um, just to compare your – what's your player name? Is it your first name? Like you just play with your name? No, uh, I play with a guy named uh, Lava Gun Jones. It's the guy with the pickle in his pocket. <laughs> so <laughs> it's a story that my uh, my cousin told me when I was a little kid, and I thought it was the funniest thing I've ever heard. Okay, yeah, because I think when I was looking at it today, it wasn't your name, so I was like I'd ask about that. But so – Wayne Gretzky, he's got 1,400 games played, almost 1,500. 
He's got 2,857 total points. You have 1,700 games played, and you've got 4,965. How does that make you feel, that you've got more <laughs> games played? Better career than Wayne Gretzky has in a video game. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, you know, it's honestly, it's one of those things where it's just like uh... – <laughs> Only if I was that good in real life. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> um, I I would like to say, though, that a lot of it has to do with the, the team that I play with. Uh, last year, I met a guy named Austin Hofer, and, you know, he's truly become one of my best friends. And we play every Friday from, like, I don't know, like 6 p.m. till 7 a.m. sometimes. It's pretty ignorant. Uh, just, like, to shout out my buddy Jace. Zaren as well, and uh, Austin has a brother named Brayden, and there's two more, and then I got a longtime IRL friend named Kyle Murray, and he's actually tonight's his debut night in the North Dakota Nightmare. So oh, that's that's, that's your team name, right? For yeah, ESHL. Yeah, okay. that's our team name, ESHL. That's awesome. Um, yeah. What was your like? What's your favorite game out of the series? Like what year? I'll be honest with you. It's actually this year's. You know, it, okay. it was 20. I loved the one with Matthews on the cover. Mm-hmm. Uh, but this year, that pressure system, I feel like it's so realistic that mm-hmm. yeah. if you can have a team in the other zone, in their own zone, like, it's pretty real. I mean, aside from, like, the stuff where they don't grab the puck and whatnot, and, like, but it's pretty realistic, in my opinion. Yeah. Yeah, I like it a lot better than last year's. Um I think my favorite all time was like NHL 14 when they had like the winter classic in it and stuff. That was one of my favorite ones. I wish they would bring that back. I don't know why they haven't. Um, But yeah, do you have any other questions, Gally, about like NHL or the game? Oh yeah. 100%. I mean, I have, I, I think I've had every single Chell since NHL 07. I mean, I've been a humongous Chell fan my whole life. I'd say Chell 15 is probably my favorite, the one with Bergeron. That one was just goaded. I got all my friends into the video game, and uh, I've had some very competitive tournaments and emotions come out <laughs> from from that video game. But um, I guess just a question for you. When when did you start playing um, you know, Chell, and uh, when did you get introduced to the series? So I started playing in 2012. Um I just kind of started playing hockey right around um, 2007, maybe 2008 is when I started playing. I didn't have an Xbox at the time, but yeah, right around 2012, one of my roommates and juniors had an Xbox and we would play it. Okay. <laughs> nice. Yeah, I think. Um... What was it? I. Well, I haven't played. EASHL, like I have the last two years. Like NHL 23 was the first time I had like other friends to play with. Because usually I just played like all by myself or just did like franchise mode or whatever. But EASHL mode is so much fun. And yeah, I'm sure you've seen it. And just like playing with your buddies on a team together is just like amazing. And yeah. yeah. And, uh, It's honestly the most next level thing. Like I play with a lot of different people. Some of the people that I play with are also legally blind. There's a guy named Drew Garza and Josh Snyder, and they actually have a little bit less vision than I do. And we, we win some games. It's, and it's a lot of fun and like, we're getting better. Um, We've created a a Twitch channel. Uh, It's called actually blind gaming. And in the first two days I got 16 followers and I, nice. yeah and it, it, like it, it's it's really interesting and, and you know a lot of a lot of it's informative because the blind hockey community is so new to hockey so i i try yeah. to really kind of coach coach what i'm saying practice what i preach if that makes sense and like mm-hmm. I, I, eashl is the most fun i've ever had out of any video game like you had Same. said earlier like playing with your friends like in a club, like being like, Hey guys, come on, let's do this. And then there's the whole RP hunt. I don't know if you guys are into that. Like that's I'm not good enough for that. <laughs> yeah. What, uh, what level are you 
platinum? Like, what's your level? Uh, I'm a diamond three. Whoa. I don't even think I've seen a diamond three. Damn. <laughs> or, like, faced one. We've seen some platinums, but... Yeah, me and my buddies, we've got like we've got like three of us that play. If you ever want to play with us, we're totally down. We would always need the help. Oh, um, absolutely. Hell yeah. Yeah, I'll text you about that. Um, <clears throat> but yeah, I think, I mean, that game's just fun. It's kind of like, I don't really think any other game has something like that in terms of like a full team that you play together. Like I know NBA kind of has that for the park, like where you can play outside. But yeah, EA's... With the NHL series, that's like the one thing they've. I wish they did more with it. I feel like they do a lot with Hockey Ultimate Team, but um, yeah, I think it's a great game, honestly. Yeah, yeah, I feel like FIFA and NHL are always rivaling, like ri- rivals against each other in the EA series, just because <laughs> those. I think those are, in my personal opinion, those are their two best, um, you know, series. Um, but, you know, going on to my next question, too, about Shell, I, I've got all sorts of questions. I guess, you know, what's your favorite feature or, like, addition that NHL's done, um, from your opinion? Um, or something that you'd like to bring back or remove? Um, i kind of like to hear your, your side on that. Yeah, for sure. Um, I really like the, I kind of hit on earlier, the, uh, the addition of the pressure system. I feel like it makes it feel a little bit more realistic and adds a different, you know, like some teams might be really good at the fast break with the two on ones and they fix that because you can't score every single time on a two on one. Yeah. Now. In previous games, like there was a tap in 100% of the time and it was so unrealistic because the goalie would eventually catch on that and then just play, play the, yeah. the back door. And I guess, I don't know, the one thing that I wish that they would fix, like, is how you're affected by the ping. I don't, I don't know if you necessarily know what I'm talking about, but, like, there's, if you play over 45 ping, your guy won't pick up the puck, like, everything's going to be, like, delayed, like, I feel like that might just be a server thing. But it also could just be the internet. I'm not. I'm not 100 sure. I didn't know that. <laughs> that makes a lot of sense though, because there's some games where I can pick up the puck, and then there's some games where I just can't do anything. But it probably has to do with that then. <laughs> I wish. I wish they would bring back the winter classic mode. That mode was fun. Yeah. Yeah. No, that's that's a fire mode. I. Shout out anything. I, I I think they had GM connected way back in the day. Oh. I want to say like NHL 13 maybe had it. That was sweet. They need to bring that back. Like I feel like that's the one thing. Like all the comments on on social media on um, NHL's EA NHL is like bring back GM connected. Or I, I mean I remember one thing that would always like trigger me was like poke checking and getting tripped and getting trips. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That was just like. That always angered me. I think they fixed it a little bit, and they've they've really um, you know enhanced the stick lifting and and poke checking. I think that came around like NHL twenty or twenty one. Um, but yeah, man, I miss the GM connected so much. That was such a good time, and I, I still play franchise mode, and the GM mode. It's so much fun. Yeah, those are fun. Yeah, yeah, Gally, you got to get the new Xbox and play ESHL with us because it's honestly a blast. I know, I'm, I'm still rocking the Xbox One. Um, one thing, I mean, I have played EASHL. I don't know if I'm saying it right, EASHL uh, before. Yeah. And the one thing that was very fascinating to me was the goaltending. So, like, Tony, I'd like to hear your perspective from this. Like, what is it? Like, how, do you play goalie ever? What's the goalie like on the North Dakota Nightmare? Um, I'd like to kind of, like, just hear a little bit about, you know, the goaltending aspect of uh, playing in that league. Yeah, for sure. So um, there's kind of like, so let me let me think of it like or put it like this. So you can play two v two, you can play three v three, you can play four v four, and four v four is with a goalie that's a user. I am mm-hmm. the worst goalie in the world. <laughs> uh, I don't think that I will ever be good at that. To be honest with you, um, it's, it's just it's tough. And so, actually, uh, a guy named Braden 
uh, Hofer is our goalie. And, you know, he just started this year and he just was like, all right, I'm going to run with it. I'm going to get good at it. And he got, he's pretty good at it. And he has a lot of fun playing it. And it's good. It, you just got to score differently when you're playing against a computer goalie versus playing against a user goalie. So you might yeah. need to sell an extra fake or pretend like you're going to pass and then wait for that goalie to just overjudge it and slide out, if that mm -hmm. makes sense. Yeah. Yeah. It's like real hockey. Yeah. Yeah. That's no, true. Cool, man. Uh, <clears throat> Gal, do you have any last questions you would have? Or oh, yeah. Like that? 100%. Um, so I guess, you know, throughout, this kind of goes back to both that could be in, you know, Throughout your whole career, what's the best player you've played against or played with? You know, in your in your youth hockey, juniors, college. Um, is there any notable names, notable people you've played with or played against? Yeah, for sure. Um, in high school, I played against Ryan Hartman. Okay. Um, he plays on the Minnesota Wild. Um, and then I was at a, a AAA tryout with <laughs> – with Alex Galchenyuk. Um, with, no way. Oh, wow. Yeah, he, That's he was cool. crazy. That, that too, I'm not going to lie. <laughs> yeah, I bet. All these Russians, you, you have some funny stories about these Russians. <laughs> yeah. Or I, I don't know. If, I think he, I think he's Russian. I think he was born in the U.S., but he yeah. has a Russian background. Um, so I guess just touching a little bit more on blind hockey, um, something that I was curious about, is there, you know, is there, is it a contact sport? Um, is there fighting at all in it too? <laughs> um, I wish, no, I'm kidding. <laughs> um, <laughs> no, but I will say that it is extremely physical. It, 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 people run into each other sometimes. There is rubbing out on the boards and stuff like that. And like, there's some big men on the team and, uh yeah yeah it's actually surprisingly physical i i ended up breaking my collarbone two different times Ooh. in blind yeah, that's hockey. that's brutal yeah in blind hockey that collarbone injury is tough i never had luckily i didn't have any like injuries like that i didn't <clears throat> i got lucky but i knew friends that had that and it was tough for them yeah the second one, like, so the first time I broke it, I had to get a bar placed in my collarbone. And then the second time I broke it, I broke it at the end of the bar. Mm. Okay. Ouch. That is, that is painful. I know. I heard once you break it once, it's a lot easier to, to break it again. Um, yeah, so I guess. Sure, but I so within your, your time with Team USA, sorry if I cut you off or anything. But within your time with Team USA, um, is there a specific, you know, moment when you guys are playing against Canada or um, any other any other specific team that uh, really stands out to you? Um, honestly, this is going to sound a little cheesy, but my whole entire life I waited for a game to be on an even playing field, and every single time that I have the opportunity to skate with somebody from the blind hockey community, whether it's the first time skating or, you know, like their hundredth time skating, like just being out on the ice and building those relationships. I'm actually a part of a charity called the dented buck foundation. And we travel around the United States and we play in, uh, in dog nation tournaments and stuff like that. I don't know if you're familiar with yeah. Dog Nation. But they are a charity out of Colorado who um, supports people who go through accidents, whether they're hockey related or, or not. Like they're they're truly special people. Like they've taken us to Avalanche games and put us in a suite. And then wow. there was one time like I was watching the game through my phone because I couldn't really see that far. And they were like, we're going to push you on the glass so you can see. And yeah. I was like, right in the second row. And then, like, it was crazy. That's so sweet. Hmm. At an NHL game, too. That's that's yeah. That's got to be a, a once-in-a-lifetime experience, you know, being glass-side. 
Um, so I guess within, uh, you know, blind hockey, is it, is it within the, it, is it, would it be in Paralympics or, how, or Olympics or? So it's supposed to be in the Paralympics in 2026. Um, but what needs to occur is there needs to be four total teams. So Team USA okay. has a team. Team Canada has a team. Russia was working on a team, but then there were some things that are kind of going on. Um, yeah. And, and then Finland is working on a team, and so is the United Kingdom. But once the United oh, wow. Kingdom and Finland create a team, it'll be able to uh, go through through the Paralympics. That's cool. That's going to be That'd sweet. Be awesome I, I would I – would, I'd be your biggest fan if you you made the team, man. <laughs> yeah, that means the world. It really does. Yeah, no, we were, yeah. yeah. Um, yeah, I think. Oh, well, anyone listening out there that hasn't witnessed blind hockey, um, you can find it on YouTube. Any just clips or anything like that, if you're interested in more about it. Um, I think it's really interesting how just like the sport is played. Where, yeah, it's just it was like mind boggling to me just watching it and like just how awesome it is that. You know, I mean, hockey's a great sport. Everyone should be able to play it, and it's great that they have that. But, yeah, thank you. Yeah, of course. All right, Tony. Well, we appreciate you coming on. Um, we, I'll do this. I'll get a lot of your like socials or anything like that. If anyone wants to reach out to you that's listening, um, we'll put that in the description in the video, uh, stuff like that. If you guys. One thing that'll be in the description if you want to reach out to them, anything like that. We'll have that there. But other than that, we appreciate you coming on, telling your story, learning a little bit more about blind hockey. Is um, just we didn't know. I mean, there was so much that I felt like I had to learn about, um, and there's always more I could learn about. But um, yeah, I'd definitely be down to play some EASHR with you if you're ever open to play with my team, or you know, if you guys ever need an extra skater, I'm down to come on. Yeah, that would be an absolute blast. Uh, I would totally love to do that anytime. My, you got my number, so anytime yeah. you're on, no, just send your... me a text message. Yeah, no, I'll send you, or I'll get like your gamer tag or something. We could add each other as friends or something. Um, yeah. But yeah, anything else? Any other thing you want to drop or any people you want to thank or shout out to? or anything Yeah. Before you go? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, I, I kind of hinted at it earlier, but I would just like to thank Personally, I would like to thank Drew Garza and Josh Schneider for uh, getting me the game through the Dental Puck charity. Um, that was kind of like one of the most jaw-dropping things that ever happened to me. It was like they purchased it for me because they knew I was going through something financially. Um, and then I would love to shout out my teammates, Austin Hofer, Braden Hofer, Jay Zarin, and Kyle Murray. And like, I just had you know, Dylan Zenner, like there's so many people I've met through, through the game that, you know, they hit me up and they ask me how I'm doing, how my day is. And like, that's one thing about the EASHL community is people are either trolls and very toxic and rude and like are very dismissive yeah. or they're incredible people and, you know, want to actually build a relationship and friendship with you and, yeah. and have fun playing a video game collectively and yeah it's a blast i mean just i mean you guys messaged me and like at first i thought you guys were kidding <laughs> because <laughs> because people are rude like i get i get yeah. hate messages every single day like oh you're trash at the game oh you're this you know you're so lucky you're a loser touch grass like be yeah. nice like people should just be kind to each other and appreciate that yeah. they're even able to play a video game because in some countries, there aren't video games. That is true. Yeah. And it brings, yeah. I mean, it's a fun activity to do with your friends, especially. And yeah, <clears throat> I've gotten a couple messages where people will leave me like these voice messages on Xbox. I'm like, really? You took time out of your day to send me that? And I don't know. It's just dumb. Yeah, me being the, the hockey player I am just naturally, I've, I've definitely got into it with some people on online yeah. versus on the messages yeah. and whatnot. And yeah, it's it's pretty damn toxic. But you know, there's, just, there's some great people out there. I feel like hockey is just such a good community of, um, you know, from I play on a beer league team. Um, I've been around professional teams. I've been around college teams. Um, you know, all, all around youth, put, grew up playing youth hockey. Um, even 
got into some dabbled in some refing. I mean, it's just such a great community and there's, there's some really wonderful people out there. Um, and you know, I, I wouldn't think anything different, um, coming from Chell. Um, it's such a, such a kick-ass game and I just feel like it's, it's very interactive and you can, you can definitely meet a lot of people on there. So, uh, that, that makes my heart happy that there's some, there's some good people out there and, um, yeah. I'm not the biggest gamer myself, but, um, that's, that's just something that's really cool. I think that comes out of video games and a lot of people don't get to, don't really see that necessarily. So yeah, for sure. Cool. All right, Tony. Well, thank you for coming on to our podcast, sharing your story. We'd love to have you on. Um, maybe we'll have some stuff in the future too. Um, but yeah, we'll definitely keep in touch. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Thank, thank, thank you so much. Yeah. Anyone listening? Yeah, thank you so much, feature, Tony. Yeah. Give him a follow. Give us a follow. Subscribe, like, everything, all that fun stuff. It'll be, You'll be able to share this with your friends too. It'll be on Spotify, Apple Music, YouTube, all that fun stuff. So perfect oh yeah hey we got to do some uh live streams of some some shell in the future yeah. with us yeah, and the boys. yeah let's do it do a turn <laughs> or something yeah yeah yeah. so Pretty down fun. so down well all right everyone thanks for listening this has been episode number 13 with tony chesro and everyone have a great rest of your week and we'll see you next week as well bye guys <laughs>